This is a review of the Hobby Boss King Tiger uh, product number 84531 and also a comparison with the other versions. And I'll also highlight that this is uh, a warning about the tracks in different versions of the kit, which you definitely should be aware of before purchase. Production of the King Tiger, or the Tiger 2, officially named uh, Sonderkraft for Zeug 182, uh, at least I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, uh, lasted from October 1943 until the end of March 1945, where the Henschel tank works were overrun by Allied forces. It is believed that a total of 487 Tiger 2s were made, including three trial versions. From what I understand, these were all produced at the Henschel plant in Kassel. In this case, it means uh, parts from subcontractors were assembled at Henschel. If you want to know more about the tank itself, I recommend you go to the Tank Encyclopedia webpage. I'll put a link up uh, on the screen and in the description. Uh, this website has tons of information to get you started, including sources for further offline and in-depth reading. This is also my basis for the information I'm able to give on the real thing, since I'm by no means an armor expert. Um, if you do want ridiculous detail about the design and production processes and the various iterations, the series by Jens and Doyle are always recommended. There are five kit variants released by Hobby Boss so far, uh, with a sixth one just coming out now. The first one, which I'll show you uh, right here, I'll just move the completed model. Let's show you the box for the, the first release, which was all the way back in 2018. This was the so-called Porsche release, <clears throat> or the Porsche turret version. This was actually a version which in real life was not chosen for mass production and the term Porsche turret is misleading. Both the first batch and the subsequent batches of turret production were designed by Krupp. The correct term from, for the mass produced var variant is production version or in German Serienturm. This is also sometimes incorrectly called the Henschel turret version. Because the Krupp factory had already filled an order for 50 early turrets, it was decided to not let the first batch go to waste. That's at least my understanding of uh, the Tank Encyclopedia, Tank Encyclopedia webpage. Uh, instead, they equipped the first probably 48 vehicles with the early turret, and then two uh, turrets were used for other unknown purposes. The next version of the Hobby Boss line is the Henschel 1944 production version. <clears throat> this is the one I built. It's this one right here. Well, right here, except for the fingers. Like the so-called Persia version, this version has uh, Zimmerit which is an anti-magnetic mine paste used specifically by the Germans during the, world, during the Second World War. And the contents of the two kits, the so-called Porsche turret version and the Henschel 1944 production version, are nearly identical in the well, from what you get in the boxes. One obvious difference is the difference between the early and the production version of the turrets, uh, which I'll uh, show you here for comparison. This is the uh, finished Henschel production version of the kit. Oops, my apologies, I forgot I should use the stand. <laughs> Sorry about that. There you go. Okay, so there's this pretty obvious difference between the early and the production version turrets uh, and uh, the uh, production version uh, is the one I built uh, and the, um, uh, the so-called Porsche version uh, have pretty, pretty different turrets. <clears throat> the early version, the so-called Porsche turret, which is this one in uh, the first kit I showed you, has these uh, rounded edges in the front uh, and the production vehicle does not. It has straight edges as you can see right here. So that is the uh, very visible and main difference between the uh, production version and the early version of the 
of the king tigers. This is the easiest way to distinguish between these two variants, both of, both of which saw combat. So you, you can build both versions if you feel like it and still have them uh, realistically entered into, uh, into battle. Now, the next version <clears throat> is the Henschel February 1945 production, which is getting very close to the last production versions. It has a different set of tracks, which I will get into later, as the tracks were altered on the real things. This version also has a mesel gun barrel, depicted right here. Um, whereas the two previous ver uh, ones, uh, kit versions, have a one-piece plastic barrel, which requires uh, only minimal cleanup. So this is perfectly fine, even though it's plastic, it's one piece, it's not a problem at all. Um, also, no Zimmerit uh, was needed on this um, February 1945 uh, version, uh, since that was not applied from around September 1944 onwards. Also... The uh, 1945 version of the kit has a muzzle cover included, which is this little uh, piece right, which is this little piece right here. Now, the fourth version of the uh, Hobby Boss range is the July 1945 version, which is this one. As you will note from the introduction, this was never actually manufactured because this is uh, after uh, March 1945. It has the same metal barrel and muzzle cover as the February version, and it has the same tracks, which are awful, and I will get into that later. The fifth version of the <clears throat> of the Hobby Boss kits is a very early uh, production vehicle, which builds a very specific one, the uh, Fagestell uh, number twenty eight zero 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 nine. It is a Porsche, uh, so-called Porsche turret version with Simmerit. And the last version of the kits, the sixth version of the kits, is the Henschel 105mm barrel version, which is also fictional as far as I know. The King Tigers actually produced had an 88mm gun barrel. About the build process of the kit. My skills are probably in the low to intermediate range. I'm not as experienced as many others to do these kinds of videos. So if I say something is difficult, maybe that wouldn't apply to the more knowledgeable or seasoned modeler. Um, anyway, this was my first King Tiger build, and it was off to a magnificent start. Uh, this regards the wheels and the suspension. The wheels and suspension basically did not requ require any cleanup, since any mold lines on these parts will be hidden on the finished model, uh, regardless of whether you weather it or not. You can see these suspension parts are hidden behind the wheels and the wheels themselves, well, the only things I had to clean up, sort of, are mold lines on these uh, sides of the, um, are mold lines on these sides of the, um, on, these si on these surfaces here, of the, um, of the wheels. So there's no, there's no problem at all. In reality it does not require any cleanup. So. <clears throat> and now the exception uh, to not requiring any cleanup was two pieces at the front of the hull, which is piece E40 and E41. Uh, but regardless, this is a very nice beginning to a comprehensive build, and it sets a good tone for the builder, I think, that you don't have to do cleanup on the uh, suspension parts and the wheels. The kit as such has plenty of mold lines, though. And in this regard, it is below Dragon standards. It's kind of Dragon's forte to me that you don't have to do very much cleanup at all. Now onto the tracks. And this is one of the main reasons I'm doing this video, so others do not make the same mistakes that I did uh, in assuming what you get. So a warning. The tracks are vastly different between the various versions of this release. Product numbers 84531. Uh, which is the production turret, which I built, is this one, and the uh, 84530, uh, the Porsche turret, so-called, they have the same kinds of tracks. And they build like plug-and-play. 
they do not require any cleanup, at least not in my experience. Of course, if you get a bad print of the plastic parts, that could vary, but um, maybe I just got a really good one, but at least I didn't have to do anything to it other than cut it off the sprue close to the piece itself and uh, put these things together. Now, contrary to these two kits, which were uh, which are wonderful in this regard. Um, the versions with the late production kind of tracks. Uh, for instance, the 84532, uh, they have entirely different kinds of tracks. In the instruction manual for those kits, they look easier to assemble. But unfortunately, that is not the case. They require cleanup, which is time consuming since you'll be doing uh, around 102 links per side. Um, and that's the completed links. Each link consists of two parts. So we have one on uh, top, which includes the guide horns, and then the, uh, the Y part, the link part, you can say. So, <laughs> um, and these pieces fit poorly and it is quite po quite difficult and maybe even impossible to keep them workable unlike the tracks in this version these ones the early version of the production versions and the uh, uh, so-called Porsche variants they are the, the tracks are so easy to assemble and they are completely by themselves they are un entirely workable so you can pose them however you want and most likely you'll be able to have movement if you did it better than I did in my first attempt. So, um, But anyways, I tried assembling a few links of the, uh, of the late versions to uh, compare with the vastly better earlier versions. And what I get is, what I get is, um, <clears throat> what I get is this kind of uh, fit, which is to say not at all. I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, the guide horns are raised from the link part itself, and it just doesn't fit in there properly. So you have to do cleanup on these. I didn't have to do any cleanup on those. Pretty big difference, uh, especially when it comes to enjoying a build, because as most, if not all, tank modelers um, uh, have experienced the. Um, the joy of building these models does usually does not come from assembling two times around 100 links cleaning uh, if you have to do cleanup and the the sooner you get it done with the better but anyway the tracks done for the Henschel 1944 production version which is this one um, they were done in around two evenings this was actually a really encouraging experience since no cleanup was necessary. The parts are molded precisely and qualitatively well enough uh, that you can simply plug and play. You lay up links and then you insert the two guide horns in their proper slots, uh, holding the links together uh, and keep them uh, workable if you are careful with your gluing. This last bit is very important because you get 100 link sets uh, there will be no spares uh, for the, um, which is kind of unusual actually, in this, in this series, you will get no spare links if you choose to use all the ones on the turret. Then you will get no spares for the links themselves. You get spare guide horns, but not the links. So just beware. Um, a test fit of the King Tiger itself proved that the thing indeed has workable suspension and tracks. And I am confident if I had not glued the wheels to their base underneath here, if I had not glued them here to the uh, to the uh, to the suspension rods, if I hadn't done that, I'm pretty sure they would be workable too. I won't know until I build the next one from the stash, uh, which would most likely be the Porsche turret. But um, I'm, I'm, it, it definitely does seem like it. Another thing to note is that the outside of the links do not have mold lines apart from the 
uh, from the pinheads, the outside of these, they do not have mold lines on this flat surface here, which makes it also unnecessary to do cleanup. Very, very, very good. <clears throat> um, the pinheads do have these very, very small pinheads. They do have a, a tiny bit of, of mold line, but it's not, nothing I've cleaned. I mean, I'm just try and get the camera to see if it can actually pick up any of that. But uh, one thing I'm pretty sure of is that once you have it on the, uh, on the stand, on a rail car, whatever, it's not going to be noticeable. So, but there is that one tiny thing. The inside of the links, they do have uh, some mold lines on this uh, flat uh, surface. So, um, well chosen, I would say, if indeed it had to be a choice during the production process to have mold lines on either the inside or the outside of the, of the track links. Anyway, sometimes these kids surprise you with their unadvertised functionality. And this Hobby Boss King Tiger is certainly one of those cases. Nowhere on the box does it say that these, um, that these tracks are workable. It doesn't say that this and this is workable. Uh, it doesn't say that the suspension is workable. You can see at least it goes up and down. You can place it on uneven terrain. Absolutely no problem at all. So it has this kind of springy uh, quality to it, uh, which is uh, absolutely uh, perfect for building on uh, diorama bases, which are uneven. Now, putting on the tracks, Putting on the tracks, <laughs> um, my mistake was that I put on the side skirts for uh, painting and weathering before putting on the tracks. So I put this on and then later I tried to put on the tracks inside here. And that's a problem because it comes very close here. The problem is that the back side skirt, it, it scratches this one it scratches against the tracks right here, holding them back as you try to put them on. This made it very difficult but not impossible, and I ended up pushing the back part of the side skirts away from the hole. This part is just ended up prying it open. Um, the way I did it, I was wasting time on several attempts, and I broke the links several times. However, this also showed that it is very easy to repair these tracks including the guides, should they break off, the guide won't. If they break off, you can just put them back on, no problem. I'm going to insert two pictures here, which show a tweezer and a paintbrush respectively, pointing at the place where I connected each track run after maneuvering it onto the wheels. So I didn't assemble the track run as, uh, one, um, as one circular piece. I, um, I had them um, in one long line and then put it on and uh, then assembled it, uh, as you can see the pictures. And that's, uh, so you can do it that way, obviously. Now, my recommendation when assembling this kit is probably well known to those of you who already assemble King Tigers, um, is that you put the uh, painted tracks on first, uh, side skirts later. This can be achieved easily by first painting the hull, uh, including attached wheels and, uh, and sprockets. So if you do that first, and um, um, and then putting on the painted tracks, uh, and then putting on the painted side skirts as the third step. Um, now the model should be ready for detailed painting and weathering with no hassle regarding the, uh, the tracks. So, yeah. Now, about the, uh, the Zimmerit on the uh, production version and the um, early uh, so-called portator version. Um, the Simmerit for this tank consists of two cut-out thin plastic sheets that look like this. The Simmerit pattern look like, looks like this all over the sheet. The problem is the Simmerit pattern is completely uniform and machine-like. Here I have a Trumpeter Tiger 1 Where I did nothing to the Zimmerit, it is the exact same Zimmerit sheets used on these two models. Uh, the one from Trumpeter right here and the one from Hobby Boss right here. 
Um, it's not that it looks completely awful, but it certainly is not realistic upon closer in inspection, especially if you if you look at um, images of real Zimmerit on tigers uh, and Zimmerit in general, it's an uneven application. It's not machine-like. It wasn't done by a machine, it was done by hand. Um, and it certainly wouldn't look uh, look like this completely uh, uniform. Um, so, in order to make it look more realistic, uh, I have tried soaking parts of the Zimmerit in glue and then scraped, prodded or pushed uh, but it led to unsatisfying results. Um, you can see that, I believe, still on the back of this. Right, the the uh, the blob between the two exhausts. That's a result of me trying to work it with uh, with softening it with glue and then prod it, and it just didn't it didn't turn out right. It simply destroyed the pattern entirely. So I don't think that's an option. So I next tried to hold a soldering iron close, heating the material and also trying to find the correct temperature for this as well as using a mask obviously, and it didn't lead to good results either. So I think I may have found a solution for making the included plastic Zimmerit cards look more realistic, which is a scribing with a scalpel, making light or moderately heavy incisions into the plastic, deliberately not always staying within the vertical rows. And being careful not to place incisions at too much of an angle, but more or less staying horizontal when cutting. I done this uh, on the front plate here, and uh, you can, you should be able to see some uneven patterns as a result of the scribing. And I think it looks okay. It's not like uh, when you get a dragon a tiger with Zimmerit mold already molded on. Those are pretty much perfect. Uh, they are the best uh, versions out there, in my opinion. Um, uh, but it, it definitely is... It, it does work, this. Uh, I think the, the Zimmer card, if you scribe it, uh, and you make uneven uh, scribe lines with a scalpel, it's going to work fine. It's going to be strenuous on the hand. Um, it's going to take some time, but you can definitely make good use of it. And um, uh, it also means that with these parts, you can also see there's some left over. You have uh, half-made, you can say, Zimmerit uh, sheets uh, for, for other models as well. Um, as I mentioned, it is a little bit strenuous for the hand to, to keep scribing all of these surfaces. Uh, a King Tiger has a great portion of his surface be Zimmerit. Uh, front plate, front of turret, both sides of turret, both sides of the hull, and the back plate. So there is quite a lot you have to do, but then the back of the turret also, of course. So there is quite a lot of uh, Zimmerit you have to um, you would have to scribe if you do if you try to do that, but it's um, it's certainly it's certainly usable. I wouldn't say this is a, a throwaway uh, kind of um, kind of result. It's okay, uh, and um, and I think it definitely makes a huge <laughs> improvement over this uh, trumpeter tiger, which used the same pattern that I built previously, which is in which is I simply didn't do anything. So it, 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 it is it is a much more realistic uh, expression. Now I am satisfied with the result on the uh, King Tiger, and I do feel it looks convincing uh, from a small distance uh, at least uh, of 20 or 30 centimeters. Um, I know maybe some simply would revert to a Zimmerit made from putty, which is the old school way of doing it. Uh, and I would say that Hobby Boss and Trumpeter um, could and clearly should have put a minimal amount of effort into making a sheet with uneven lines from which to cut the shapes for each whole and third uh, part. What is the difficulty in 
in making these lines uneven is one it's one sheet which you have to make uneven lines in I mean can't be that hard so the, uh, there are two parts which come with pre-molded on Zim uh, for the uh, for the King Tiger and those are the um, whole machine gun cover right here and that's uh, this has perfectly uneven uh, uneven shapes nothing wrong with that and then there is the back hatch of the turret which is also pre-molded uh, along with these two holding holding pieces here and that's just that's just uh, it looks perfectly fine also so it's not like uh, it's not like uh, the manufacturer didn't know to put uh, uneven uh, zim uh, on these uh, on these models, which I also would be very surprised by. Now I'll remove this and we move on to the photo edge parts, the PE parts. This part of any build always makes me apprehensive. The photo edge part. The build itself has a moderate PE sheet of around uh, 50 parts. Let's see, this this small one right here. And then there's another sheet with the two largest uh, grills. That's it. So it's not too bad. The bending of those particular uh, large pieces um, goes here and on the other side. <laughs> Just rotate this on here. Now, <coughs> the bending of those particular large pieces is easy, since you use the plastic parts you're supposed uh, they're supposed to go onto. You can easily see from the back. Go uh, pieces of plastic. Um, you use those plastic parts as a jig. Unfortunately, both of them, uh, I could not match the full length uh, of the plastic piece uh, to the uh, PE. Um, and I've also included two photos so you can, you can see that uh, before painting and uh, weathering. I made sure to try and match up the grills with the edge of the plastic piece, the outside edge, so they would look right from the outside. Um, and even though I didn't match to also bend the PE exactly to the form of the plastic piece, I did get them to adhere to fully to the plastic surface and follow it maybe 95% of that. On the final build it's not very noticeable fortunately, but nonetheless, since these two particular grills were not pre-bent, um, it will be very difficult if not practically impossible to get them to match the plastic pieces exactly. Um, but maybe some super experienced model knows how to do this. Someone, or at least someone with better skills than me. Um, now the four other grills, uh, which are in the back here, they uh, required no bending and they fit perfectly onto the model. Um, there was a particularly daunting three-piece tool clamp, which was supposed to be wrapped around the wire cutters, which is this part right here. This part, this, this clamp right here consists of three parts. I know people who, are, who have a good grasp of how to do photo edge, they will have no problem with this I think, but it was a challenge for me. So if you're inexperienced with PE, just um, beware that this is your sort of uh, baptism of fire. The rest of the tools only have one part of the tool clamp as an actual PE part. Uh, the rest is molded onto the tool itself. To me, the molded on parts do not seem too thick or clumsy, but they look the part. Now, the headlight on the front plate is right here. Um, it was a lot easier than expected, actually. Even though Hobby Boss has you bend two small pieces in two places, the bend places are marked by indents, so you don't have to measure or, or guess. Um, but it's the, it goes right around the back here. You have to bend here and then you have to bend again there. And the same for the, for the one going from the other side. Um, you then glue them together at the middle, uh, back here. Um, 
and behind the rear of the light itself, holding a tiny piece of PE between them, which is barely visible. Right there it goes. Down there. I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can see it. Um, now this all went well. Uh, one problem with this, however, is that the lengths of the two pieces were not adequate to reach their intended point on the headlight itself. So they only go uh, forward by this much, where they should have been uh, at the front here. Um, this could be me not doing a good enough assembly of the headlight, but at least beware. Uh, and the machine gun also, the turret machine gun. It has two sides, uh, a small PE part, which make it look really cool, and were surprisingly easy to get on. Now one is uh, this part right here, and another is on the gun itself. So, and I think it looks absolutely awesome. And actually, even though this part of the um, of the turret of the turret machine gun was very thin plastic parts, very fiddly. Um, I didn't have any uh, huge difficulty in uh, putting it together, so I think that speaks. I think that speaks uh, highly of uh, of how well the kit is engineered. That someone like me is able to just uh, get these very thin, brittle plastic pieces together without uh, breaking anything. I think that uh, speaks of the kit more than it speaks of me. Now, to me, this kit has some exquisite PE detail, but not so much that you end up stalled. Uh, it seems just about right for someone learning their way with this stuff. And I don't think experienced modelers will have any problems. So that's all good. Um, there is some interior included with the kit. Um, first and foremost, two detailed uh, machine guns for the Holland turret, which would be here and, well, <laughs> behind, uh, behind the... Um, uh, on the gun mantlet, um, <laughs> um, uh, and then there's the turret interior for the main gun assembly and uh, hatches uh, interior of hatches such as this hatch, these hatches have interior pieces, the back hatch has interior pieces. All in all the turret could certainly be posed with hatches open uh, but uh, the, the, whole, the hole itself is completely empty but the turret has lots of things going on inside. So uh, that part of the build is also very, very cool. If you want to build it with open, uh, open hatches, you definitely can do that. Also, the, um, the cupola has uh, interior parts as well. Now, this brings me to my second gripe with the, um, with the kit. The periscopes. Uh, my first gripe was with the uh, simmer inscribing, I would say. That's not uh, up to par. They definitely should have done a better, work, a better job on that. But my second gripe is that the periscopes periscopes on the cupola you may be able to see but I haven't actually put them in um, the periscopes you uh, are supplied with do not fit into the cupola regardless of the angle I try to insert them at and regardless of uh, filing away the paint on the sides uh, I think that is unsatisfactory um, but it is the only part of the build which I at least uh, downright could not complete and I don't really see what I'm supposed to have done wrong here um, now, the fit issues relating to the PE grills and the parts for the headlight are not serious problems to me because it's it's very very subtle, uh, and you won't really, I think, notice it on the headlight or the uh, the grills not matching up 100%. If you if you zoom in, if you look very close, you will see it, but it's, it's not something which is uh, visible at, uh, no, at uh, if you just take a look at the model real quickly. It's, uh, I don't think it's, it's that big of an issue. I have to say, this has been one of the most pleasant builds I've ever had. The parts fit uh, almost entirely perfectly. There were only a few, and the only real problem I had was with the actually the internal the internal gun breech uh, inside here um, and some of the PE. The instructions were clear most of the way and only one piece did I have to look up online for an answer to and that was piece PEA18. Uh, so I used a walk around video uh, on YouTube uh, for those ones and I'll tell you what PE piece A18 is is those tiny hooks here. There's one on this side, 
plus one on that side. So YouTube walk-around videos solve that issue pretty quickly. So that is the one uh, place where the instructions weren't clear to me, where I couldn't figure out where to put it. So it was a pleasure to build about around 99% of the way. And the biggest grief, which was putting on the putting on the tracks, it was basically on me and perhaps the instructions for not stating as much, but it's certainly not a problem with the kit parts. It doesn't yet appear that if you build it correctly, you can have movable tracks, but I'm not going to demonstrate it on this one as I did not do it correctly. Um, but this is an experience which often comes from building the first copy of a kit, unfortunately. So on the Porsche version, for instance, and on later versions I will be building on this, uh, that shouldn't be uh, a problem uh, for me. I hope not, at least. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'll say a few words about the weathering. Um, the weathering took an unexpected turn into rust bucket for the side skirts, which is owing to a, a beginner's weathering mistake I made, um, putting on uh, Vallejo uh, acrylic paints and trying to brush them off, which is sort of... Uh, I was able to get it off mostly, but... Um, it left these residues and um, it ended up looking rusty and I just thought, well, okay, I'll go with this. This is fine. Um, I'm not going to spend um, inordinate amount of amounts of time trying to uh, reduce this effect. These, uh, it's rusty side skirts. It's not, it's not bad as such, I think. It's, it's okay to, in my mind, it's my model. I can do whatever I want with it. This is fine to me. I'm, I'm happy with it, actually. I'm happy with the way it looks. Um, I know normally German tanks would most likely not rust at all, since fortunately they had very short lifespans. Um, this is different when it comes to the, uh, the tracks, which uh, from what I understand should be uh, rusted because they were uh, exposed to the elements up here, for instance, and were not sort of coated in anything like from what i understand one coated in, in anything like a paint uh, like the surface of the rest of the tank uh, but this was just um the raw materials so they would pick up rust uh, more quickly um but pictures of nazi tanks do not seem to show rust either as i understand it the model has been pin washed and vallejo splash mud uh, as well as thick mud products have been applied to the running gear and a bit in the surrounding areas, uh, which I find is a very, very quick, uh, efficient and fun way of doing weathering is to use these uh, Vallejo products um, for the uh, mod effects. Mod effects is always good for hiding things like the um, aforementioned uh, mold lines on the, um, um, on the surfaces of the wheels. Uh, in here you can hide those with the mod effects, obviously. It, may, it makes a, a quick and realistic effect, I think. Um, and it also has a bit of shine to it. Of course, you can also add um, gloss varnish uh, to make it look even more wet. You have mud effects underneath here and some on the tracks. So, all in all, I was pretty happy with the result, even if it didn't turn out a uh, realistic, uh, unrusted uh, Tiger tank. It was. It still looks. I think it looks pretty okay. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm happy with it. The rust should all, rust should also be on the uh, exhausts, obviously. So. Um, and I'm practicing my wood painting. This is uh, very difficult to, to get right, I think, and it's, uh, it is a matter of, uh, of keep practicing until you get, get it right. I skipped shipping on this one since the, it was made for a, a group build, which was set up uh, on a one month time frame. Um, anyway, I had a great time building this version. And I highly recommend you pick up either this or the so-called Porsche version for a truly pre pleasurable uh, King Tiger kit. I think the Hobby Boss uh, 84530 and 84531 kits uh, specifically are undiscovered gems. And I would uh, avoid the later versions which use the uh, later kinds of tracks uh, at all costs because that is an entirely different matter. So um, 
highly recommend it, but uh, be aware that the um, um, the tracks uh, will make or break if you have uh, a good time building the different versions of this kit, so avoid the later ones. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, see you next time.